good morning, good afternoon, whatever time it might be, wherever you're tuning in to us, another fine episode of The Nonprofit Show. And today we have back with us for a nonprofit thought leader show, Anne McCauley Lopez. Welcome back, Anne. Anne serves as the SEO content writer for Agency uh, Content Writer, as you can see with her amazing background there. But today she's going to share three steps to stellar SEO content. So stay with us. Before we jump into the deep end with you, Anne, and (laughs) we're going to learn so much, Julia Patrick and I want to remind our viewers and our listeners that we're here and who we are. So hello to Julia Patrick, CEO of the American Nonprofit Academy. I'm Jarrett Ransom, your nonprofit nerd, CEO of The Raven Group. And we are so very honored to have the continued ongoing support from our amazing presenting sponsors. So I'm going to give those verbal shout outs to Bloomerang, American Nonprofit Academy, Fundraising Academy at National University, Nonprofit Nerd, Your Mm Part-Time Controller, Staffing Boutique, and Nonprofit Thought Leader. So thank you so very much. You have kept us going and growing well over... Hmm, 600 plus, plus, plus episodes. Uh, And again, thank you so very much because we are allowed to have such amazing conversations. If you missed any of the conversations or you want to go back and listen to what Anne is going to share with you for this conversation, you can find us on so many channels. That includes Roku, YouTube, Amazon Fire TV, as well as Vimeo. But wait, there's more. We're also (laughs) on podcasts. So if you're a podcast listener, Go ahead and queue up the nonprofit show wherever you might stream your podcast. You know, Julia, I've heard lately that we've become like the Netflix um, binge series. So and <laughs> you're going to share with us like so much information. People are going to come to your show. And then hours later, they're still going to be, you know, watching the nonprofit show. But we certainly want to welcome you back. And thank you for sharing your time and expertise with us. Thank you for having me. It's uh, This is always a great opportunity. I have found over the last few years, I truly have a heart for nonprofits. The work that you're doing out there is changing people's lives. Mm-hmm. And if I can help get your website found, get, um, get your mission out there to more people, yeah. then I've done my little piece of it and you can take it and run with it. Uh, so yes, it's exciting to be back. I'm excited to see both of you. Thank you. Well, you know, I always love your energy. And we were saying in the green room chatter, I always feel like you give us ideas that aren't intimidating. They're logical. They seem achievable. And so you kind of reduce that hair on fire moment for me at least. And, uh, and so I really appreciate that that steady hand and guidance. But one of the things that we wanted to bring you back on today to talk about is SEO. We're always talking about it. We always, you know, you need to do this, you need to do that. But if we could pull back a little bit and really dig down into what it is and what we can do that's actionable. And so I'm really excited to kind of get a deeper understanding. And I think I want to start with the question is, what is SEO content strategy? <laughs> I know. Is this going to get my hair on fire? What are, all, what are all these letters? Oh my gosh. Yeah. No, don't get your hair on fire, lady. Okay, <laughs> um, SEO stands for search engine optimization. And it's basically, how is your website found on Google? So when we talk about an SEO content strategy, at its most basic, it's really how is your website organized? Is it organized in a way that Google will read and understand? Google scans websites and how Google scans them has changed over time. So our websites have to keep up with that. And the content strategy piece is what information is on there? Is it useful not only for the people who visit your website, but is it also at least some of it findable by Google? Not everything has to be optimized. And I want to make sure I say that from the outset so I don't forget. <laughs> yeah. Um, we can tell okay. a story about those we serve, but we don't need to have all those keywords in it necessarily. So that's it in a nutshell is how Google finds us and what's the content we're putting out there. Yeah. And I love that you said it's changed over time. So yeah. you know, the our search engine, so our website, our intranet, our internet, whatever we we you mm-hmm. know refer to it as the world wide web it has changed. And so that has, of course, impacted 
how search engine optimization needs to change. And you work with so many organizations, different sectors, for-profit, nonprofit, but you definitely have a love for nonprofit. Um, and so I'm really excited to learn from you here because as you know, Anne, mm -hmm. SEO is not like our bailiwick for us nonprofit nerds. Like that's not <laughs> typically why we go into the sector. No, not at all. <laughs> and I think for, for most of the folks I work with, for-profit and nonprofit, that's not your focus. That's why it's right. mine. <laughs> that's why there's right. other folks That's why there, we right? love you. Yeah. So, yeah. And help me understand this a little bit more in depth. Um, this is not like a one and done thing. You know, you work to get a new website up or change it. And then you're like, okay, whew, we're done. Right. I mean, this is an ongoing thing, correct? It is. I'm sad to say it's a marathon, not a sprint as well. So it will take a little bit for Google to, to notice you and we'll, we'll dive into what those details are today. Um, but yeah, it is, it's because Google changes, but honestly, it's also because your nonprofit's changing. You know, there may be a time of year when we want to highlight donations, or we may want to highlight a particular program or Kids are going back to school. Um, this is kind of the season for that. And if your nonprofit is focused on that, then maybe we've got to have a different focus. We want to have um, donations of paper, pens, and crayons. I don't know, yeah. uh, for your nonprofit rather than, you know, fill the teacher's classroom rather than um, some other program that you have. And that's okay. We can work with that. Um, so it's really, it's really about being, being flexible. I remember one of our early conversations, Julia, we talked about, you said, well, if I fill up my editorial calendar, what, what if I have something else? <laughs> right. <laughs> then it's okay. Yeah, um, right. And so we, we want to allow for that as well as we're, as we're planning out the content we're putting there. And this, this conversation is really hyper-focused on how do we do that strategically, both for the organization and for Google. So I have to admit, Julia and <laughs> yeah. Anne, I always thought it was a set it and forget it. And you just blew my mind in yeah. this. Like it can be uh, seasonality or themed based off of what's what's most important for the organization. But I have to admit, I always thought SEO was a set it and forget it. Like, let's just do it every year. Let's update it and let's be done. Um, but to have it based off of what's going on the in the priority of the organization, never would have thought of that. Yeah. And we stick to, we stick to those, you know, the keywords that, that we identify and we'll, we'll dive in on that a little bit. Awesome. But yeah. I mean, there, there can be some strategy and also while telling the story, right. We always want to tell the story of who we're serving or yeah. highlighting our staff or, or whatever it is that we're doing. Um, I've got a client now and he's got an, uh, basically like an agribusiness and he's got a different style of farming. Mm -hmm. And so we're writing about that and he sends me an article and he's like, oh my gosh, all that we were talking about the weather in Arizona right now, I'm in North Carolina now. And, uh, and he's, he's in Utah and he's like, this weather in Utah is weird. I'm like, so is Arizona. Mm -hmm. And so we said, well, how does that impact the business? And how does this impact the mission of your nonprofit? And he's like, we've really got to get this information out yeah. to people. Right. Um, so even the literal weather <laughs> in this case is impacting the content that we're going to put out ever-changing. I love yeah. it. So yeah. in, in that understanding, and Jared, I appreciate you saying, you know, that set it and forget it versus understanding that this is an, an, an ongoing thing. What does technical SEO mean versus just SEO? Well, I think I've come on here before and said, I don't want to put good content on a bad website. And I don't mean that your website's bad. I mean, maybe it's out of date. Maybe it needs some tweaking. And where I want to start and, and where I've seen great results is on the technical side, which is the, the back end of the website, that part of the website that nobody wants to touch. We <laughs> want to set it and forget it. But there are some things that need to be monitored. We need to make sure the website's being updated. We need to make sure that it's um, loading in a particular time. Um, all the things that the search engines count as high priorities, we want to make sure our websites are doing as well. That's the technical side. There's also some SEO kind of coding, for lack of a better phrase, that we need to do on the back end of the website. I know enough on this topic to know it's important and that I am just slightly dangerous. So I actually have 
<laughs> I have a website partner and all they do is build websites and technical SEO and they have wonderful maintenance plans mm -hmm. because then what that allows me to do is partner with them and say, okay, here's what I see on the front end. And here's what we've got on kind of more the, the creative side on the front end right. of what can we do to enhance what you've already done on the back end. So you already have this good website. How do we put that great content on the front to really mesh them together and create a beautiful marriage of tech and storytelling? Ooh, someone write that down. That was good. <laughs> good thing this is recorded. Yeah. No, that it's we'll have so to listen important. to it again. <laughs> yeah. That website optimization is step one. Um, and, and you're right, like like looking at the back end, because I can't tell you how many times I've been to a website, including maybe my own, and a link didn't work, right? Or the pic the picture didn't load, or or there's so many different nuances. And so that technical piece of it is so important. And I know that that definitely is not static. It's it's constant. Yeah. Yeah. And it really, it impacts how Google scans the site. If it's not loading enough, then that's it, everything else could be great. You know, if it's not something else, you know, if things aren't updated and stuff like that. So yeah, it's, um, and that's, a, that's one of those things that you can uh, farm out. You can have, some, you don't need somebody on your staff to, I don't have, I, I hire my website partner. <laughs> right. I called her up one day and I said, you know, all this stuff I'm selling and telling people about, I, I'm going to need that. She's like, I've been wondering. <laughs> it was a well, little bit of an embarrassing conversation. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? It's a really interesting conversation because so often in the nonprofit sector, we struggle to get going with that great website that can do everything. I mean, our episode yesterday uh, or, or on Monday was all about the donation um, experience the donor journey on a website. And yet we're, we're, it seems like we're doing it once and then letting it go and not being engaged. Um, so I appreciate you bringing that up to kind of help us understand we need to keep investing in this, you know, uh, for, for a lot of reasons. Step two, you talk about the impacts of keyword research. And again, what is that looking like for a nonprofit? <laughs> there are some tools out uh, out there. SEM Rush, Google Suggest, uh, uh, Uber Suggest, um, Keywords Everywhere, uh, Ask the Public, all sorts of research. There's also on Google, if you type in a question, it says people also ask, and I'll tell you my big fat secret. My big fat secret is I use that for blog post ideas for clients. I put in the main idea do a search and go to people also ask that will give you a, a very good idea of literally what people are asking <laughs> yeah, right so take it and run with it that'll give us a good idea about what to use for keywords um we can get i spent a year looking for someone who knew seo and i came across a lot of scams mm -hmm. and um a lot of strategies that i thought gosh that doesn't quite sound right it sounds like your uh writing fake reviews or doing these other, taking these other yeah. tactics. A lot of that probably is still happening, but I don't go near those folks anymore. What I found was that if we're answering questions, common questions about our organization, um, we are uh, understanding what are people asking about the organization? What do they want to know? What's the story we want to tell? We can even tell a story and infuse those keywords. We have to be, you know, you kind of have to be strategic about it. But again, not every piece that you put on your website has to be, has to have all those keywords. Mm -hmm. So I start and I do an overview. And if we're not going and doing like pay-per-click ads and stuff like that, mm -hmm. I understand what the volume is. I don't need to know the cost necessarily of those keywords for really what we're doing, which is fairly basic keyword research and SEO, you know, search engine optimization. From there, once we've built that up, then we can go and we can say, okay, and we can go to my guy who does the in-depth research and say, okay, how do we build this from where we've gotten it and make it even more powerful of a website if we want to do so and if we have the budget for it, because that's going to cost more. But for me, it's really about strategically creating those stories and using that technical piece and what we know about Google and what we want to say about what we're doing. So. Um, what, uh, so I go in and I do research. We find those keywords. I have conversations 
with my clients about, you know, what do people call it? Do they call it hydroponics farming or do they call it farming with less water? Do they call me a content writer or a freelance writer? And we write to those words. Um, and that's really what it means. You know, like Jarrett, we were talking about uh, the home, it's not homeless people, it's people experiencing experiencing homelessness. Right. So if it's it's those kinds of of tweaks, how do we help people who are experiencing homelessness during this, you know, during the pandemic, during the whatever now? Home. I uh, love I love your, I forget what you call it, but your big fat trick or whatever. Like yeah. people tell Google a lot of things, right? Like they we do Google a lot of things. And so <laughs> if we can pull up and really leverage that. Um, and to help us determine, you know, truly what those keywords need to be or key phrases to incorporate for our, our SEO. It's almost like, you know, the recipe's written for us. We just have to pay attention. Right. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> Don't tell anyone though, Jared. <laughs> now, I, ha I have a follow-up question. When you talk about this um, in terms, and, and let's just address it through a blog, mm -hmm. a blog post. Sure. Are you talking about actually using that vernacular and those specific words in the content and and or plus putting it in the backside? So, for example, I know like on our website, if we do a post, we have the opportunity to on the backside input those words as well, whether yep. they're in the actual content or not. So could you help us with that uh, to understand I, that? I do both. I use, um, typically I'm on WordPress websites, yeah. so I don't okay. know what others use, yeah. but there are, um, two plugins, Yoast or rank math mm -hmm. that are utilized, um, that I utilize on those websites. And I know on Yoast, it's a green light and rank math gives you a score, which is like getting a test score. And I'm like, Oh, I got a C plus. Oh, I got a B, you know? Right, right, right. And it helps yeah. give it that extra push in addition to everything else that's in the background. But yes, it definitely, um, it definitely helps to have it in, in both places. Also on your images, mm -hmm. um, to have that keyword on the images. Yes. Okay. That's great. I'm telling you all my secrets today. What is that? I had the flu. Everything's coming out now. <laughs> <laughs> it's because okay. you love our nonprofit so much. I do. do oh, I don't tell you all my secrets. We do, um, have but yes, that does I love it. Um, asking, is there a difference between using keywords or key phrases? Oh, good um, key phrases are a little bit longer. They're uh, they call them technically long long tail keywords. And yes, I use them interchangeably. Is there a difference nominally? Yeah. Um, but both are ultimately the same purpose. Okay. Ultimately the same purpose. I will say too. I will add. It's important, and this is always the first question I ask is who's your target client or who's your target audience for nonprofit? Like, are we talking yeah. to donors? Do you need volunteers? Do you need yeah. um, a sponsor for your big events? You know, who is it that's, that we're trying to reach on this version of the website or within this blog post that we're doing or this series of blog posts mm -hmm. so that we can then, I can dig a little deeper in the keyword research. So if it's, um, uh, children with leukemia versus adults with leukemia or, um, you know, mothers with children who are experiencing homelessness rather than just homelessness in Phoenix mm -hmm. or homelessness in Charlotte, you know, whatever it is, we want to dig down a little bit deeper so that we're capturing that audience as well. And, it, and again, it can change depending on what we're writing about. Like, what is that that we're highlighting for the nonprofit? So it's a little bit different. I mean, I think business in the for-profit world, it can be the same. Mm -hmm. You know, always, you know, you want to focus on a service maybe rather than a, a, a program. But the mm -hmm. idea, the idea is the same is that we want to highlight, um, highlight something and use the keywords and know who we're talking to, which but is so in. like, kills me. Like, who are we talking to? Like, I don't know. <laughs> right. Right. Honing in on that niche audience, honing in on that niche terminology. Both of those are, are really complementary to one another. And I just want to call out, you know, because Julia and I learned this from you, Anne, is mm -hmm. SEO is also built into blogs or can be built into blogs. And that's one of the things that you provide our, our great sector is really that blog writing in addition to content writing for websites is how we can build in this search engine optimization, use those keywords, 
in blog articles. And I just, I had to call that out because Julia, I segue, you, Jared, thank you. <laughs> we learned that from you. We did. And, and that's why we want you to kind of dovetail that into how that is strategic content, because absolutely. I always thought that that was just kind of like an extra that didn't flow out as much and it wasn't as powerful, but maybe it was just more of an ego driven kind of thing. You know, I have an actually one of the, sorry. No, no, no. It's actually one of the easiest ways to gain that. Um, they used to say Google juice, the Google love. Mm -hmm. So one of the things I've done, um, is, and I, I'm pausing because I'm putting new packages together. So I'm kind of like, okay, let's talk about this. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that we can do, I know I'm very, very, very excited. So one of the things that I have noticed is um, whether it's for-profit or non-profit, we have a, a lot of websites have a lot of content. And I'm like, okay, how does it all go together? Yeah. And how can we create something? Because what Google's done is they want relevant content that answers people's questions. Again, I thought that was just kind of why we did all this on websites, but no, it's not intuitive. People were just kind of throwing content up in some in some instances. So the first thing I like to do is just take a look at the website. There is a, it's either called a cornerstone or a pillar blog post, which is a longer form post. And it starts interlinking all those articles. It's one long article. Um, the one that we'll mention later that's on this topic that's on my website is I think is one of mine. And then there's another one. There's an ultimate guide to hiring a content writer that I've used as both really as pillar cornerstone blog posts, um, it starts linking pages of your website together, which gets us that Google love. And it's really simple because your articles are there, right? Like um, if we're blogging on American Nonprofit Academy, let's pull in some of those podcasts related to that topic because it signals Google. The other thing that we can do that Google likes, which is another big fat secret I'm telling, we should call this all my secrets, top 10 <laughs> secrets I have, um, is to take, to take an article from, um, to link to an article outside of our own website. So you link it back to mine, you link back to Jared's, you link it to a nonprofit professional's website. If you're a nonprofit, link it to Julia's, right? I. American Nonprofit Academy. Mm -hmm. um, so that, and it's related. It's not just a random link, but it's related to something. So you can start building authority online. Mm -hmm. So that Google notices, oh, you've got our attention. We see that you're interlinking. This website is about this. Yeah. It's not about all the other stuff. It's about this. Mm -hmm. And it really, um, it really boosts that. So then once we have that pillar post created, we have other topics that we can write about. So I, I love bullet points. It's so easy. Like, here's what, here's what we know. And I'll take one of those words and say, it's like freelance writer on mine. And then I know, oh, okay, I'm going to write an article. I'm going to link it to freelance writer from my pillar post so that the blog posts are talking to each other. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, <laughs> we create fascinating. a single post. It is. It's, um, at, like Jared, I'm going to, yes. the world we'll talk later. Juliet, we'll talk later. Yeah. Like, it's just so, and it's so, it's fun for me. Like, you love nonprofits and fundraising and getting all the right people in all the right places. And I love looking at content and putting it all together. So yeah, I you just love, jumped up in my seat because I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> you love pillar post. I love it. I'm thinking I need a pillar post, but I'm going to blame the sweet tea that you're drinking in Charlotte. And I think that's why you're divulging all these secrets. And I love it. <laughs> oh my gosh. I am. I am. Oh my goodness. You know, <laughs> next time I'll have to do my top 10 secrets. I don't know. I know. <laughs> I think we've, we've gotten through it. Hey, you know, what's really interesting about this is that in the nonprofit sector, and we do have a lot of information that we learn from our own experiences, but from the sector. And yeah. so it's, a, I love what you said about really becoming that online um, authoritative voice. And because I've got to believe that when funders or donor investors are searching mm -hmm. and they, they find you, maybe that elevates or builds a new relationship. Are you seeing that? That it drives, um, not, it drives new 
you know, new content to drive new content. Oh, for sure. For sure. And I think too, for, for you ladies, you are thought leaders, you know, so let's, let's put some of what you've learned. You go, you know, maybe you've gone to a conference or you speak at a conference or speak to a group. And here's what we discuss. Like you're, I don't feel like we're giving anything away. I think for a little while people thought blogging was like, we're giving away the farm. And I go back to the um, auto mechanic. And I've probably said this before on here, but you could do a video about how to change the oil in my exact car. And I will not do it myself. I'll go, <laughs> wow, that guy really knows how to do it. Or that gal knows how to do it. I'm going to go to them. Yeah. Right. So you're not giving right. anything away, right. you know, how to put a board together and encourage yeah. them. Well, I, Great, Jared, come in and help us do that. <laughs> right. Know, like, I'm right. not doing that. Yeah. So I let's write about it on the blog. And then for that big pillar post, which is like 1500 words, probably, then okay. we can, we can think of a strategy. We can say, okay, here's what we've got. And here's the direction we want to go and different articles that we need to maybe fill in the blanks of some of the information that we've talked about. But also we want to be sharing events and sharing where does the money go and sharing family stories. In yes. some cases, we can probably weave in some of those keywords for sure. Mm -hmm. um, subtly, I feel like that, if you want to talk about superpowers, that's my superpower. Um, so we can we can certainly do that, but not everything does. You could have someone on your staff write an article and let's get that up there. It's not all SEO, um, but it is important to have some of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, Absolutely. that's my, uh, my hill I'm willing to die on. <laughs> I love it. You know, I always learn so much from you and I want to make sure that everyone gets to know that they can go to agencycontentwriter.com and you have a fabulous article. Want more website visits? Three-step SEO content strategy. It's a fascinating read. Um, it really helped us to um, talk about what we were wanted to talk about today with you and my colleague Lopez. Just amazing. Again, it was at agencycontentwriter.com. We have a comment for a viewer. I've got to share this with you, Anne and Jared, because it's great. <laughs> this, this viewer writes in, why do I leave the nonprofit show with so much personally imposed homework? Yes. <laughs> Same. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's just great. I really do. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's really cool. And and you always give us um, a strategy and a framework with not only how to do something, but why we should be doing it. So that's super powerful for us in the nonprofit, because as our, our viewer just, you know, wrote in, we do have so much to do. And we add things to our plate every day. And sometimes we have to make a judgment. What's what's the highest and best value? And so thank you, Anne, for sharing that with us today. You're Again, welcome. we are just always amazed when Anne can come and visit us. Anne at agencycontentwriter.com is her direct contact information. Or again, go to agencycontentwriter.com. And as she says, call me, I will help you figure this out um, because it's a, it's a big task. Again, I'm Julia Patrick. I've been joined today by the amazing Jarrett Ransom. Jarrett, can I say the newly the affianced you may yes it, it's been a lot of fun thank you thank you for the support and i have a feeling and you're gonna have a lot of people calling you or writing <laughs> you to say i want a pillar post like that's just what i'm leaving there going like pillar post okay i need one of those i mean yeah Totally. I've probably I probably already written yours, Jared. Oh, what? Oops. Yes, I have to witness <laughs> and does my blogs. And um, it's been phenomenal working with you. And you really do, you know, weave in so much. It's fantastic. So from one nerd to another, thank you. I'm I'm super glad to have you on my team and um get this, you know, leverage your insight and expertise. So we are honored to have you not only on the show, but in our sector at large. Absolutely. Thank Absolutely. Sure. I enjoy seeing both of you, speaking with both of you, nonprofits. Um, this is like the nonprofit year for me. I'm telling you, Good. I just love it. So Good. it's been really fun. And uh, I think I'll see you again one more time. So yes. this is wonderful. At Thank least. you. Yes, Good at one. least. Well, we want to make sure that we thank all of our sponsors before we um, leave our viewers and our listeners today. Our gratitude goes out to Boomerang 
American Nonprofit Academy, your part-time controller, Nonprofit Nerd, Fundraising Academy at National University, Staffing Boutique, and of course, Nonprofit Thought Leader, and Macaulay. Mm -hmm. It's been really, really amazing. And as we like to end every episode, reminding ourselves, our viewers, and our listeners to stay well so you can do well. Thank you, ladies, so much. Have a great day. We'll see you back here tomorrow.